Well, hello again this week. It's my Friday musings, and I'm Sue Kropauer. I'm a digital equity champion, a connector, an advisor, and a serial entrepreneur. And one of my passions is helping 30 to 50-somethings in midlife or mid-career that just feel stuck in a rut. And they don't know exactly why. As a mentor for midrepreneurs, I try to do some wise words, some giggles, and some other things each week to help you gain some insight into the life, business, or career that you've been dreaming about, thinking about, obsessing about, and wanting to go after, but haven't quite figured out how. Currently, we've been going through a short series on the signs and symptoms of stuckness what stuck looks like, and discovering the things that lead to a lack of motivation or direction, and then giving you actionable ideas on how to get your mojo back in gear. Well, last week, I introduced the seven symptoms of stuckness, and we got through the first four before we ran out of time. We touched on the following, discouraged, lack of direction, exhaustion, and being overwhelmed. And as I said last week, these symptoms manifest differently for different people. And no, typically no two people feel stuck, well, exactly in the same way. So, today we're going to wrap up this week with the three symptoms of stuckness. And in no particular order, I think I'll start this week with an insidious symptom that often can result in a sense of complete defeat for people without even being aware of it. I call it friendly fire. Outside thieves can steal your mojo. It's that, I don't know, proverbial fox in the hen house, the, the wolf in little red riding hood, the barn door wide open so the cows can't come home or they leave or whatever that saying is. It's a situation where you have allowed the thief to enter into your head. It leads to a feeling of being so torn by your own doubts, your choices, and your fears that you never even get to see the need to fight this well-meaning but outside enemy. This friendly fire, at its most disturbing, it can bring even the toughest and most resilient person's mojo to their knees. So, Who are these mojo thieves? Well, they're friends, family, and colleagues that all want to share their advice on what you should and shouldn't do. The naysayers. You actually know them if you think about it. They're the ones with the stories that usually start with, well, I know a guy that tried that, blah, 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 and continue to list all the reasons that it didn't work. Or perhaps it sounds something like, um, like this. Are you sure you want to risk it? You've tried this or that before. And in this economy, well, maybe you should just stop dreaming and be grateful that you have a job. Well, they all kind of go on like that. But they're all, they're all fabulous folks and probably a lot of them a lot closer, maybe even living in the same house as you. <laughs> but these well-meaning folks in our lives compare our ideas and goals and aspirations with their own lives their colleagues, or simply point to the overwhelming world of social media perfectionism, and it's easy for us to allow the friendly fire to creep into our head and color our thinking, making us believe that we are not doing as well as they are, or not as capable as they are, or we question or second-guess ourselves constantly. When you're comparing too much of what you are doing with what others are doing and focusing about what they have and what you lack, you will start to lose yourself. It's like a dysfunctional family trying to throw a wedding. Complete and utter chaos. So, when you can't differentiate between these relationships that uplift you from those that deplete you, you need to realize you've been caught in friendly fire. To remedy this, 
make a conscious effort to surround yourself with positive, supportive, encouraging people who leave you feeling better than you did before you got together with them. Number six, bewilderment, also known as puzzled, perplexed, baffled, disoriented, panicked. You're stuck because you're unable to recognize what success looks like. It's a journey filled with moving targets and muddy expectations. You don't know what success looks like. So, well, frankly, you wouldn't know if you achieved it. Sometimes it feels like too many great ideas and you don't know which one to go after first. So you puzzle over which goals to pursue and, hmm, just stay stuck. The opposite of bewilderment is clarity. In my experience, people flounder when they're chasing too many goals all at once. And I am not alone in my belief. Seth Godin, entrepreneur and business strategist, is a huge fan of goal setting. His Pick 4 Goal Setting Guide is designed around the concept of no more than four goals at any given time. Now, before you run out and start digging around to grab the book, know that it's out of print and right now super expensive. So if you want to go try and find it, I suggest scouring used bookstores or eBay if you want to find a copy. Just a heads up there. But back to the topic at hand. Four goals are still a manageable number, but... I differ from Seth in my opinion. I believe no more than two or three goals is the best to start with in my experience. Personally, I have adapted the Michael Hyatt full focus process to keep my goals achievable and my progress sustainable. As a matter of fact, my own printable PDF daily planner is offered as a bonus inside my Kickstart Your Comeback course. It's It's a practical tool that manages your weekly progress on goals and tasks and schedules. Last one. Do you have an amazing purpose, but little means to act on it? Um, think about the nonprofit with an important cause, but with well, a lack of talent or discipline to execute it. Or how about a hot new startup with a great product idea, but no ability, no go-to-market strategy, no operational framework to pull it off? Number seven is what I like to call All brains and no brawn. (laughs) Step seven assumes you've already asked yourself the brains part of the equation. What do you want to achieve? So rather than looking at the dream or the goal, now you need to focus on the solution. Hate your job? Let's find a new one. Not getting along with your roommates? Time to move out. Want to lose those last stubborn pounds? Well, eat less carbs. (laughs) Okay, trust me, that one is definitely easier said than done. But here's the brawn. Make an action plan. What are the steps that you could realistically achieve in the next 90 days? Write them all down, all the ones you can think of that will help you achieve your goal, no matter how small, how insignificant they may seem. In fact, the more things you can think of, the more prepared you'll be when it comes to actioning them. But, as we said earlier, no more than three main goals. So clump all of them together in steps that either work you towards those big three or put them in a parking lot for another day. And then do one thing a day. Check one thing off your list every single day. (laughs) Hey, list lovers, can I get an amen, sister? (laughs) So, brains and brawn. Brainiacs, do you have a clear, inspiring purpose that is captured in an achievable goal or set of goals? Brawniacs, crazy names, do you have the right tools, people, mindset, mentoring, support, and yes, technology to make a difference and get moving in a positive direction? Whether it's something I can provide you help with or not, In my experience, folks are successful at getting unstuck and achieving their dreams of a different lifestyle, a new business, a fulfilling encore career, when they have a framework to work with and a support system to keep them focused and accountable. Don't try to tough it out alone. Don't succumb to number seven, all brains and no brawn. Find a success framework or blueprint 
Join a peer group where you can share strategies, successes, failures, engage in creative collaboration, and more, all to help you get unstuck and moving again. Next Friday is Labor Day weekend, and as a change of pace, I'm going to talk about the importance of having an R&R, rest and relaxation, re-entry plan for getting back to work. It will help you to be more fully enjoy your holiday time off with family and friends. You won't want to miss it. So, wishing you a great week, and we will see you next Friday.